have from an LED standpoint is uh, the sole source of the lighting, you know, for that crop. Uh, so we definitely, you know, cover all those ranges um, in terms of how our technology can be applied. Uh, sometimes we get a question that's asked, you know, well, why do you guys still offer, say, the HIDs, you know, the, the high pressure sun, the strap metal halide? Sometimes for these operations, uh, whether it be cannabis or, or any other type of crop, sometimes the most important thing is that is that you're up and running in terms of getting your business going. And so sometimes that's the situation where, uh, from a budget standpoint, it may be best to enter in with, say, high pressure sodium. But many times in my career, I've actually sold high pressure sodium then to only six months later retrofit them with the LED fixtures that we provide as well. Um, so there's, again, it, it's still a place to have that kind of comprehensive uh, application uh, from all the different uh, products. So with that said, what I'd like to do now is kind of just show you uh, one of our uh, LED linear fixtures. And what I have today is actually one of our uh, 200 watt versions. Um, and in this, in this particular fixture, you know, so as I said before, two different wattages, 200 watt and a 300 watt, you know, auto sensing um, in terms of the driver. So, you know, if you're in that range of 120 to 277, you're perfectly fine. Uh, these are IP66 um, and so can be sprayed down with a high pressure water hose. So operating in environments where it's 100% humidity is just simply a non-issue. Um, the, the linear fixture is one of the other great features that they can do is uh, the capability to daisy chain. So you can actually just take off this cap. And if you want, you can actually plug the end of this fixture into an another uh, you know, fixture, just kind of putting them end to end. Uh, we also have a standard three foot connector cable that can connect from this to then the next adjacent fixture. Um, the number that you can daisy chain will be dependent upon the wattage version and then which uh, voltage you're operating the fixtures at. Um, so it, that kind of helps to streamline the installation process. And then at the same time, uh, if something changes in terms of where plants are placed, um, it's very easy to take fixtures down and rearrange them uh, if need be. Um, the standard mounting hardware is this C bracket that you can see right here that mounts in. This is typically uh, what we use for when, say, you have uh, trusses or unistrut where this fixture then may be placed and then you can uh, kind of fasten it down with a bolt and nut. Uh, but very simple, um, you know, and then on this side, you can see we just have a power cord. Uh, we have two different types of power cords that come available. Uh, we have the uh, five wire, which incorporates the dimming wires, um, and then just a three uh, wire uh, for if you're, if you're not using dimming. All of our LED fixtures uh, come controls ready, uh, and they use a zero to 10 volt uh, dimming protocol. Uh, so it's you know very standard um, in terms of on the horticulture side of things. Uh, most, almost all control systems will incorporate some level of that type of uh, dimming protocol. What I'll do now is I'll go ahead and uh, plug it in just so you can see how bright it is. And because I'm doing this several times uh, throughout today, I'm going to place my sunglasses on and I won't keep it on for very long because it actually just, uh, you know, bleaches out the entire screen. But you can kind of see this is just in a simplistic way, our 200 watt. Uh, you can imagine what 300 watts would look like. And then, of course, with our spotlight fixture where we have 600 watts and that, you know, we have very bright, you know, obviously very uh but at the same time, the very compact form factor. That's a big part of uh, what allows a fixture on the greenhouse side uh, to be successfully applied is that high output um, with a very small footprint. Because um, you obviously want to minimize shading as you're implementing lighting or more infrastructure into the, into the greenhouse. Um, and then at the same time, even if you're you know, operating in a completely enclosed environment, um, you, you want to you know, minimize infrastructure so that it can be very easy to get things up. So, you know, again, this 200 watt version, uh, the spectrum that you saw uh, is our BPRX, uh, which stands for broad PAR uh, with a heavy red influence. Um, PAR, for some of you folks that may not know, is, is an acronym for uh, photosynthetically active radiation. Um, it's, the, it's the range of wavelengths that drive photosynthesis. Um, and then, of course, as you drive photosynthesis, that's the key factor in terms of generating as much biomass as you can. Uh, so whether it's, you know, bud weight, uh, tomatoes in terms of how much you want to produce, all those things are, you know, what we have in place um, with the technology. Um, any additional information from the, from specifications? I know Frank has been uh, dropping in, you know, different links that you can check on. Um, you can obviously go to photonmax.com uh, where we have all the additional resource like spec sheets. Um, the other big thing that I want to you know, make sure we, we everybody knows is that 
Um, that's also the place where you can get all the DLC information, you know, associated with our LED products. We were actually the very first um, to be awarded uh, certification in the horticulture category for DLC. And we had that across the board across all uh, wattage versions, all the spectra, uh, and of course, all the uh, voltage versions as well. Um, so, you know, that's that's a huge aspect in terms of, um, you know, on the horticulture front is the incentive rebates. We also have a great team that Frank leads um, in terms of uh, Frank Molander you know, on MaxLight in terms of, you know, helping to fast track and, you know, obviously investigate it, you know, if any incentives are available. So that's something that we definitely, you know, want to be a part of. Um, but with all that said, you know, one of the big things that that allow horticulture projects to be successful is to incorporate us um, as early as you possibly can, you know, on the opportunity. Um, horticulture lighting doesn't have to be rocket science. Um, it, it can obviously get to that point, but that's what we're, you know, we're here for is to help with that process. Um, you know, we put a lot of time in terms of designing these fixtures specifically for horticulture application. Um, so, you know, it is something that we look at. Um, and in terms of being very proud of, you know, the, the commercial success that we've had, you know, with the fixtures, you know, in the field. Um, so I know I'm kind of getting, you know, close to time, um, but, but again, you know, photonmax.com has the whole uh, kind of collection of information, you know, obviously for, uh, for our HID products as well, um, which are all, you know, also specified from a horticulture uh, application as well. But, you know, we'd love to hear from you. And, uh, you know, I don't know if, if there's any chats or, excuse me, any questions in the chat, but, uh, you know, I'd be more than happy to answer any other questions. Um, Frank's been so, pretty thorough about what he's, uh, what he's been putting into it. So I don't okay, know that there's any questions so far. Okay, um, perfect. Yeah, I don't see any questions yet. Um, sure. I, I did have a question. These are sure. very uh, industrial in terms of their form factor. Do you do anything mm -hmm. for green walls, interior uh, form? We, we, we can, um, and some of that is, is where we might apply these fixtures. All right, thank you, Synergy team. Um, I tried to show the, the samples of the Arista. Uh, it was just kind of too big for this video space. Uh, so I'll use the, the brochure here. Um, we have this new product. It is out now, ready to sell, purchase, install. Uh, it's called Arista. It's a new lighting control type box. Uh, it ha we have the controller that will also it has a built-in time clock, so there's no hub required. Uh, we have a daylight harvester. We have the, the different wall mount sensors, uh, ceiling mount sensors. Very easy to commission. We've been spending time out in the field in all the states that I cover and that Intermatic is, is around in the, in the U.S. Uh, that we cover. Lots of good buzz and excitement from contractors and distributors. Uh, the price point is right. And again, you don't have the extra on the commissioning. It's very easy to, to program. Sorry, buzzing. Um, again, we don't need the hub for the, for the, um, for the controller. It's Bluetooth mesh 5.0, so it'll go the wireless part of it. It's either wired or wireless. It'll go roughly 300 feet, um, depending on what you know how the walls are. If there's metal studs or anything like that, that could affect it. But for the most part, um, figure two to 300 feet. The um, Sensors themselves, the ceiling mount sensors, have the clips so they can either be mounted or uh, snap right into the drop ceiling. So another, it's a, a very good product that we just came out with that, uh, again, there's lots of excitement on. The next product I'm going to show is the contractor box. Hey, Howard, just real quick, the brochure yep. that you had, um, what link can I put in the... Um, chat for them to see that the, What's the the best way to do that would be um to contact somebody at synergy and they could okay. get the they could get the brochures out to them okay all right yeah they they would need to be ordered from the literature site so it's okay kind of so hard the brochure was really kind of a collection of the different input devices and options correct yeah exactly uh, okay exactly. Yep. got it all right yep. back to the contractor box sorry about that. <laughs> No worries. So the contractor box um, comes with a, a dead front 
like so. I just took that off so you could see the insides. Uh, the idea behind this is a contractor would go to a distributor and buy a time clock, they'd buy a contactor, and then they'd buy some sort of a, a, a box to fit them all in. A lot of times it would be too big, maybe too small, so they'd have to work around it. So we figured this is a, a great product for the, the masses for, for this type of thing. So you have a, a three, uh, three pull contactor, a two channel astronomic time clock, has a, a jump drive or a uh, USB port for a jump drive. So you have multiple timers in your um, uh, solution that you're installing. You can program one on the timer, load it to the jump drive and then just plug them into the other timers. Uh, so it saves on uh, programming time. The unit itself is a big labor savings. Like I said, you don't have to purchase all three individual pieces. It's all in one. Um, and it's a great source that uh, great product that we've been showing around to, to customers all over the country. Um, another couple things is you can add um, options of a photo cell or a surge protector to it. Next one is panel guard. So this is just a um, kind of a dummy unit, but just gives you the idea of the size type of thing. Um, kind of looks big, but um, go from 50 kiloamp all the way up to 200. So there's two versions. They come with um, not only LED monitoring, but you can um, tie to a building automation system and get alerted. Flush mounted. I was just looking at, at the question down there. No, the, the contractor box um, does not is not flush mounted, but it has the mounting holes on the back to mount to whatever you're connecting it to. Um, again, there's an audible alarm option or a building automation tie in, uh, so you could be alerted if if it, uh, whatever you're protecting takes a takes a hit. So not only do we have industrial and heavy commercial, which is what the panel guard products are, but we also have the legacy products, which are the AG3000 that would connect to a disconnect. We, we're working a lot with distributors with Synergy right now on a program that, you know, the, the contractor will buy the disconnect from an electrical distributor, but then sometimes they'll buy the AG3000 from an HVAC guy because you're protecting the uh, AC unit or uh, a furnace. So it'll either connect to the disconnect or it'll connect right on to the, top, uh, to the switch on the furnace. So this is something else that, that electrical contractors, distributors can, uh, can have to offer. On that surge note is another item. Now there's also a dead front on this, but I took it off so people can see. But the difference between this surge and the panel guard, if it takes a hit, it needs replaced by an electrician. This one is modular, where if it protects all three lines, and if one of the lines takes a hit, you just replace one of the modules. Finger safe terminal, um, very easy. And there, we had a question on the last round, uh, which sells more? Uh, it's kind of 50-50, depends on the, on the application and what the customer wants to do with it. Another good thing about this one is through Synergy, we found an application where they couldn't fit this entire big box into an OEM application. So we took this section of the surge modules, put it on a DIN row backplane. So if you have an OEM or some other application that you're trying to fit it in um, so a box like the size of the contractor box, but you have your other pieces of equipment in there, now it'll, it'll be a lot smaller format that it'll uh, work for you. So basically you're saying if you have room in another box, you can get those DIN rail mounted instead of in that enclosure. Correct, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Just uh, reiterating on the, the time clock. So if, if anybody has old T100 series time clocks. Wow, I expected to see a yellow wheel when you opened that. <laughs> <laughs> so we have probably millions of those out in the field. So this is a great opportunity to, one my um, to upsell and, and, and you know sell the newer technology to the customers. 
real easy. You don't even have to replace it or, or do the rewire it. You, there's a, a button in here. You snap this whole section comes out and it will snap right into the old yellow dial can as long as a, it's a, a one through four channel. The, uh, again, the uh, USB port, you can program one if you have a campus type environment, you may have 10 or so uh, at, a, at a school or office complex. So you can program one and put it on a jump drive and just upload it to the other ones. It has a built in 100 hour super capacitor. So if your power's out for more than 100 hours, you have way more problems than this timer. But we have that in there. Um, we also have options all the way up to 16 channels. This particular one um, is, is two channel just to show, but um, lots of different options for upgrading time clocks out in the field. Yeah, I actually had a question on this yesterday, Howard. I was talking about it with one of my contractors. He was asking about the ring. And I told him, you know, as you mentioned, you know, the it has the the five day backup for the for the time clock. Uh, it also has a non volatile ROM built in. So once you program this timer, it's going to lock in that program indefinitely. Exactly. So if you yeah, if you lost power for more than five days, all you need to do is go back and reprogram the time. So. Yep. Exactly. I know there's a few seconds left. I don't know if anybody had if anybody else had any questions. Now, as you mentioned, how we're getting a lot of interest on in the contractor box. Uh, great product. I'm glad Intermatic came out with something like that, all in one box. So, uh, um, yeah, anybody on the call, keep us in mind if you have any opportunities, uh, you know, for that that application. I was actually pretty excited about the contractor box. It solved a couple problems for me on something. It was just quick. All right, yeah, quick, Brian from Signify. If you have any lead lamp questions, uh, you can come to me. I'll be happy to help you. All right, with that, I got two products that I'd really like to, to talk to you about today. The first being our T-LED portfolio, a bit of a, a high level overview of what it is. So what I wanna say about that is, um, if anyone's familiar with the different types of T-LED, so there's type A, B, and C. Type A's work off of a ballast. Type B's get rid of the ballast entirely. And then type C's are very similar to type A, but they have a T-LED driver. And really the difference between a type A and a type C is that the type C system cannot operate a conventional lamp. So if, if I'm a utility paying money to, you know, giving you a rebate so that you transition to LED, utilities are transition, transitioning more and more to type B and type C because it ensures that you can't just throw in a fluorescent lamp and, and have the system working because they're paying you to, to make that switch and that energy savings. And yeah, that's, um, that's why they're doing it. So with that, with those definitions in mind, our type A lamps are also our type C lamps. So the nice part about that is, is that if you have a customer who has you know, different installations or, or distrib distribution who needs to serve different customers with one lamp, we can serve you know, both of those purposes. So I think that works really well. On the type B lamp, so the ones again, if I can remind you, type B is without the ballast, so you remove the ballast from the system completely. All our type B lamps are double-ended wired. So that means that on one end of the lamp, you put the, the line voltage, on the other end of the lamp, you put neutral, and the lamp lights up. So you say, all right, you said it's double-ended, so probably there's a single-ended way to do this, and the answer is yes. The reasons why we have done the double-ended solution is uh, really threefold. Number one, you have the uh, installation is much faster. It's really just undoing some wire nuts from the ballast and then putting the wires together back inside and it's, it's, it's essentially done. The other one is for installation for the, um, if you think about the, um, putting the T-LED the into, the, into the lamp itself or into the, the fixture itself, it can be installed in either direction and the lamp would work. So you don't have to worry about any kind of directional or getting called back for something as silly as, you know, the power was on one end while you had, the, you had it in backwards. And then finally, from a safety standpoint, having the power separated by four feet, as opposed to uh, less than an inch is something that is a, a big concern for a lot of people. And that, that safety is a, is a nice addition for us. So, okay. Moving on from the T-LED then, I want to go over our high bay HID replacements. So this would be a replacement for a 400 watt metal halide. And our old solution looked like this. So it kind of looks like a large PAR lamp. 
Um, there's a bunch of lamps on a uh, bunch of LEDs on the bottom. And to light up the ceiling in retail applications, a lot of times they don't want a, a dark ceiling at all. So we had a, a line of LEDs on the back that would help light up the ceiling. Um, this one probably weighed about two and a half pounds, three pounds, and you know was a was a good solution, but we maxed out at 19,000 lumens. The new product is here. So it looks very similar. It's a little more square here, but overall the dimensions increase slightly. So you get a little bit more diameter, a little bit taller. However, it still fits, fits in all the, the major fixtures that we've tested. Um, the one key factor about the dimensions is that the weight, the weight of this is roughly half of the old one. So if you have people that are concerned about something falling from the ceiling, um, this doesn't even require a, an aircraft cable to be tied to it. Um, per code. A lot of, we, we provide that so it's there because people are mostly comfortable with having, having that up in the ceiling, um, but it's not required. Um, you'll also notice on this one that the LEDs are around the outside. You say, okay, well, I wanna make sure the light is everywhere, but there's a main, one cool reason why we've, we've left that spot in the middle. And it's so that we can meet DLC, DLC requirements. So DLC is, uh, has introduced something they call DLC 5.1. The key for lead lamps and DLC 5.1 is dimming. So for whether it's an HID, a T LED, they all have to dim in some fashion in order to get that DLC. And of course, DLC is critical for utility rebates. So we have the lamp itself, and then we have a little spot here in the middle, a little cover that, that comes off with just a, you know, a little screwdriver. It's about an inch and a half in diameter. And then on the inside here is a USB connector. And for the USB connector, we have a, a little puck that has a PIR sensor on the end of it, so a motion detector. And then we also have settings on the side so that we can adjust both the dim level as well as the timeout for the, for the motion sensor. So the idea being here is that in a warehouse setting, let's, let's look at that for example, you would get the lamp, take that little cover off, install this, this sensor, adjust the timing somewhere between one minute to 30 minutes. And then you can adjust the, the light level where it will go to when it senses no, no, uh, no motion. And at that point, then you can somewhere between 80 to 20% roughly. That high end, you know, it, it, obviously you want it to come down. That's the whole reason that you're setting it. So having it much above 80% doesn't make a, a lot of sense. So with that set, then you can install the lamp. And then it will operate as, um, as a motion sensor per fixture. So that's a really nice and, and um, effective way for us to, to do that. Now I mentioned on the other lamp about having the lights that, that are on the back to avoid the caving effect. How we've achieved that on the new lamp is that we've installed on some of our lamps, we've installed this, this um, reflector on the bottom. It's a clear acrylic but it does a very good job at reflecting some of the light back up into the fixture and up into the ceiling. So when we've talked to retailers who have used this, they, they like having that the, the ceiling lit so that it doesn't create a, a cave effect inside the store. They, they like having that, that piece. So whether you want it with or without, we have both of those options. And then it's really nice that, you know, just by um, installing this puck, you can turn your, your lamp into something that is that has a motion sensor with it. In the future, there will be other accessories that we can plug into there. One of them being part of our Interact Scalable solution. So it's something that will eventually be part of the, the total Interact um, solution that we have for the, the, connected, the connected space. So we think that's a, another really nice, nice uh, approach to, to doing the dimming. Uh, put that back on there. So, and in case you were wondering about brightness, put that there and there. It washed out quite a bit. And you can I angle this. I've tried this a few times. You can angle this. You can see how even down here by me, there's still quite a bit of light uh, while the majority is obviously, you know, going straight out there. So it's a really nice solution for, for the high base. Now, you, the other thing to think about when I talk about a nice solution is that the payback on this is really fantastic. If you think about a uh, 400 watt metal halide as a system, it runs about 450 watts or 55 so, um, with the lamp and ballast. 
This has somewhere between 145 for 20,000 lumens or 165 watts for 25,000 lumens. And you're saving roughly 300 watts. So a payback for a customer using this, assuming standard, you know, use hour, you know, 12 hours a day, 11 cents a kilowatt hour, that type of thing. Um, it really, it has a payback of somewhere between three to six months in most cases without a rebate. So just the cost of the lamp and sticking it up there, you add in the, 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 the dimming puck, if we can call that the motion sensor, and you have something that has uh, a longer, you add in a rebate to the product. Now the payback can be within three months. And a lot of times if you talk to, uh, talk to a customer and say, hey, we can give you a payback on a high bay fixture of less than three months within the same quarter, a lot of times that's a, a good way to, to get convince them to, to make the switch. So it's really a, a fantastic solution for, for high bay applications. I have them in my garage. My wife doesn't like that too much, but uh, still makes, makes it nice and bright in there. Uh, finally, in my last 30 seconds, a quick note, we do also do have some corn cobs that are coming out that are high wattage. So we have a 400 watt replacement um, as well as a 1000 watt replacement. So that 1000 watt will be 65,000 lumens and it will be an ED37 shape. So a really nice compact lamp that, uh, that can go you know, fit in, in, in any fixture. So that's what well, I had for well you done. today, guys.